Hi. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge the messages that have been left for me asking when I'm going to make another video, hoping I'm okay, various other positive sentiments, uh, including one video uh, asking me to come back that got taken down because I didn't respond to it. I'm sorry I haven't been responding. I don't like making videos where the dominant point ends up being that I'm in a bad place emotionally or that I'm not accomplishing what I want to be accomplishing. <clears throat> and that in a nutshell explains why I only made six videos in 2009 and most of those were just uh, basically promising more videos and apologizing for <laughs> not making more videos. It's a, it's a vicious circle, a self, uh, um, self-reinforcing downward spiral, to me anyway. I don't want to make videos that reinforce when things are bad, and things were bad for me in 2009. And although I, they were bad materially, as well as in every other way, um, I am completely aware that so many other people in 2009 suffered materially so much more than I did. And that only contributes to me feeling kind of <laughs> bad that I feel bad when I'm really, really quite lucky. But the, t the coup de grace of the year came two weeks before New Year's Eve when Dan O'Bannon died. Dan was a friend. He's a public person. If you don't know who he was, the short answer is he wrote Alien and Total Recall and a handful of other major motion pictures, and he wrote and directed Return of the Living Dead. He was so much more than that, artistically speaking, and I'm going to do a proper tribute video to him when I'm in a place where I can do it without it being infected by my mood. <sighs> but he was a friend, and in the three weeks now since he died, I have, uh, it has just come over me in successive waves how important he was in my life. Uh, um, I realized that of all the people I've known personally uh, in my adult life. I knew him longer than anyone outside my immediate family. Uh, I met him uh, in early, or I, I guess uh, mid-1982, so that's almost 28 years ago, but I had known of him um, and felt that I knew him through his work since 1974 when I saw Dark Star, uh, which was a, a student film that he and John Carpenter made at UCLA, um, USC, that somehow got out of hand and became a feature film and was actually in theaters. And I had just discovered that I could, uh, I was 16 at the time, and just in the previous two years I had become aware of the concept that you could go to film school to become a filmmaker whereas previously I had simply thought of I had wanted to be a filmmaker at least since I was 10 but it had always seemed like a fantasy something that real real people didn't didn't do 
and now these two film students had made this film that was as as um, as it was smarter than almost any other science fiction films and at the same time was uh, in terms of the materials they had to work with was barely above these the amateur level uh, they, they, they which was a good thing it was it was like it was like punk rock it was self-made filmmaking and, and and I just felt such a such a connection and I I couldn't wait to see what this this these two film students Dan O'Bannon and John Carpenter were going to do in the future and I watched eagerly waiting for their first uh, you know professional jobs and John Carpenter hit first and I discovered that he was not his was not the sensibility that I had connected with and it took until Alien hit to realize that it was Dan Dan was the person that I had connected with uh, in um, Dark Star and then I then when I met him met him as a fan and uh, at a particularly low point in his life um, I became his uh, his friend this is some footage from a USC student film that was made in 1970 Dan was the editor and he also played the bit part of the fry cook in the all-night diner I look at this 23 year old kid 40 years ago with his entire public career ahead of him and I imagine he was already thinking someday I'm going to be a famous filmmaker and it really did happen for him the thing that people who only know the public Dan don't know is that his entire professional career was achieved despite crippling chronic illness he had just escaped poverty by selling alien when he was diagnosed with Crohn's disease which is a chronic uh, inflammatory disorder of the bowel and there is no cure and the only treatment when you have an outbreak is for them to go in and cut out the affected part of your intestines I I don't want to go into long detail but basically Dan's whole career was punctuated by periods of extreme pain and every time it seemed like his career was you know on an upswing the disease would come back and you know for those who wonder why didn't he make more movies after Return of the Living Dead and you know he did he directed one more film after that but he got sick in the middle of, of that I, d I don't know how I, I can't I can't imagine achieving what he achieved in the face of what he had to deal with in his life in the end in the end it was a, a blessing it ended up being a blessing that he died because he was in chronic pain and you know just the 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 drugs that he had to take were just disabling to him the medication for the pain not that he wanted to die he didn't but when I think of Dan I will always think of what I loved about the work that he did do and then all the work that he could have done all the but you know that it doesn't I, I just feel bad talking about the work the work 
it's the life that you lead you know if you if you find that you are the kind of person who can be an artist or has to be an artist and you make something that lasts after you de you're dead that's that's great that's a gift but you know your life is your life and he, and so much of his life was was robbed from him and and the robbery was was so much more painful because it was all because it was always in the face of of the tantalizing glimpse you know the I guess it's a really old metaphor the reaching for the brass ring no one even knows what it means anymore but oh Dan I hope that I will be able to do a really fitting video that can stand the test of time in tribute to Dan. This is not going to be it. It's getting modeled. And I, but, you know, trying to get out of my own hole and back to uh, achieving something. <laughs> It, 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 I just have to, I have to mark what a miserable, sad thing it is that Dan had to die at just 63 with so much that he could have accomplished and knew he could have accomplished and didn't get to accomplish. There's stuff out there that will come out that he did that's just astound, uh, just wonderful. I, I, I hope some of the movies get made, uh, and some of his Lovecraftian stuff is is definitely going to come out, and it it'll be great. But you know, Dan lived his life, and and he enjoyed his life when he could, and he never. Well, not never, I suppose, but he almost never despaired. <sighs>